In this video, we're gonna talk about the budget camera that's over 50 years old that I still use professionally today, and that is the Yashica Mat. After the Second World War, the Yashima company made watch parts and precision optical instruments. But the young managing director, a Mr. Ushiyama, theorized that mass-produced, low-cost, high-quality cameras could take advantage of the emerging popularity of photography. The Ashika brand quickly rose to become the largest manufacturer and exporter of photographic products in Japan throughout the 1960s. Fun fact, the brand name Yashika is a combination of the words Shishima and camera. Now, they brought out the Yashika mat in 1957. It was my first ever medium format camera and it was given to me by my father and I started using it when I was about 13 years old. I still use it today because the lens gives the really cool sort of swirly bokeh. If you've been stuck behind a digital camera for a long period of time, this massive six by six centimeter ground glass is just a breath of fresh air and the the feeling and the sights and the sounds of this 100 percent mechanical camera really bring me back and they remind me what it was that got me hooked on photography in the first place so this particular camera appears to be from about 1965 it's got the mxv copal shutter it's got the yashinan 80 millimeter 3.5 taking lens which is this one at the bottom and then the top lens which is the viewing lens is another Yashinon 80mm lens but it's only a 3.2 aperture. It's nice and bright though when you look through the viewfinder. The aperture has five curved blades that go from f3.5 to a minimum of f22. The leaf shutter has speeds that range from 1 500th of a second to bulb and the aperture has five curved aperture blades and goes from f3.5 to f22. So the Yashica mat takes 120 roll film and it will give you 12 6 by 6 centimeter images per roll of film. It has a fixed focal length lens, 80 millimeters, which is probably its biggest disadvantage. But they do have bay mounts on the front so that you can put adapters and lens shades and things like that. The later model, the, the Yashica 124G, could take 220 roll film as well and had a light meter. So loading the Yashica is really straightforward. Turn this knob and open the back. You then need to pull out the spool pin and it locks into place. We can then remove the spent spool and place it in the take up spool. Pop that in. I'm doing this blind so that you guys can see it. Pop that in. Pull the paper out. And put the tab in place. Put a little bit of pressure on the top and then wind it round so that it can't come out of its slot. Once you've got a turn on there it'll be locked. And then wind it on until the start line lines up with the little arrows there. Close the back and then wind it on until it stops. An interesting thing about this camera <clears throat> is the wind on of course clockwise winds the film on, but you need to wind it back until it stops in order for the shutter to be cocked. If you've got one of these, you take the picture, wind it on, and just do that, you won't be able to take the picture because the shutter's not cocked. So you wind it on, wind it back, and then put it back in the little hole, you'll be able to take the picture. When you're using a TLR camera, you are, of course, looking through this top lens, which means that you could have a finger or a strap waving around in front of the bottom lens and not actually be able to see what you're doing. So you need to make sure when you're taking the picture that this bottom lens is clear. Shooting the Ashika is really easy. You have a large fold-up waist level viewfinder, which has a little magnifying glass to help you focus. There's also a sport finder, which you can access by pushing the Y down you can look straight through, but I've never actually used that. I think it's more of a throwback from the pre-war cameras. The focus knob is on the side here. It's very smooth. The shutter speed and aperture can be found on these two wheels, either side of the lens. And by looking down, the window displays what shutter speed or f-stop you're on. 
The only thing you need to be careful of is you can jog these wheels whilst you're working and suddenly look down to find that you're shooting at the wrong f-stop. You of course have a self timer on the front, which is at the bottom of the lens. Mine's a little bit sticky, there it goes. And cop the shutter, as before, and press the button. And slowly watch your audience YouTube retention disappear. So that was the self timer. So we should know how to use the camera by now, but we're gonna go out on the road and put a couple of rolls of Portra 400 through it and see what it's really like to take pictures with. A little shoot on the Ashika went just as every shoot on the Ashika goes. My crazy long lockdown hair got in the way of the lens a couple of times. The aperture wheel had slipped at some point during the shoot and had to be corrected. And when I gave the camera to Jamie, she was utterly confused by the reversed image. She's used to large format cameras where the image is upside down, which is more obvious. Okay, I'm having an issue with this, hang on. <laughs> you shifting that way was really funny to watch it. <laughs> it was like... It's really silly. The cost of these cameras has gone up slightly with the popularity of film cameras increasing, but you can still pick up one of these cameras for about £200, or the more advanced 124G for about £400, which still makes them fantastic entry-level cameras. The early 1970s were not kind to Yashica. Accusations of embezzlement, mismanagement, inflated assets, and then the fuel crisis and economic downturn led Yashica into financial peril. By early 1975, Yashica was bankrupt and had to be rescued by the Kyocera Corporation. Kyocera Yashica tried throughout the 1980s and 90s to release another breakthrough camera, but it ended in Kyocera dropping the brand in 2000. In 2018, Yashica tried to make a comeback with the nostalgic Y35 digital film Kickstarter camera, but the project and the resulting camera were an unmitigated disaster. So that was the story of the Yashica. Over the next couple of months, I'm going to go through all of the old cameras that me and my old man collected over the years, and I'll finally make them all work. If you want to see that, then you should like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.